Morning my blinky flashy YouTubers. Wanted to give everybody an update on the lenses for the Technicolor. Um, for those of you guys uh, who've been following this project, um, I wanted to kind of explain what all has been going on with this and why we've been taking so long to, to have the lenses available. Um, back when we started this project, and we started designing a mold. Um, this is actually one of the very first sample strings that I got. Um, you can see the, the tabs were a little too small. Um, they'd break easily. So we, we made some changes from this. But one of the things um, that we started with, just as a standard, was this thread pattern. Um, and we did it intentional. We had located a manufacturer for the lenses, um, and they made these lenses that already had threads on them. Um, you can kind of see that there. So when we decided to do this mold, um, we based it on this thread pattern for these lenses that we could already get, were already available. Um, we didn't have any, any worries with it. Um, and the, the factory that's making these um, already does uh, work for Christmas lighting, Christmas industry, um, and works with um, at least one other vendor uh, here in the United States. So we designed the mold to work with these lenses um, and these, actually not these rings, uh, the rings that they came with were really crap. Um, so we designed these new rings or, or modified them um, to work with the lenses. So we got all that done. Uh, we got all the changes to the pixel nodes made fixing the tab width and the depth of the pores and all that stuff. We added the direction arrows to the side. Um, we got all said and done with that. We went back to try to get the lenses. Um, well, in the meantime, that uh, other vendor in the United States had seen these and had contacted their factory and said, do not sell these lenses to anybody um, in the United States. And they did offer us still the opportunity to purchase the lenses, um, but they wanted a minimum order quantity of uh, 10 million lenses. And uh, at 10 cents a piece, uh, which is the cost on the lenses, um, it was it was just too exorbitantly high to be able to do. So they, they basically, in effect, said, yeah, we'll still sell it to you, but we know you can't afford it. Um, and we would have had to uh, outsell um, those lenses by what the other vendor in the states was already purchasing from them. Um, so that kind of put us in a tight spot. What do we do? We've got really good uh, pixel strings finally and now we have a manufacturer who due to their uh, American client will not sell us these lenses. So we went to a different factory um, we found the exact same mold, the exact same facets um, for the exact same lens, and we just had them put the, the threads on the base. Let's see if I can focus that so you all can see it. Um, so we got that done, and these actually came back a little bit uh, cheaper. Um, these are blow molded. And so they sent us, it took uh, about four weeks to get these first lenses done. And so they sent us the lenses, and I tried them with our rings. Um, you may also notice when you start putting these together, the rings have a slight taper to them. Uh, this end here without the flanges is slightly narrower than this top end. And that was to make it really easy to get uh, the thread started when you start putting it in. So we got these lenses in, and you'll see just by the fit here, They're, they're just really, really tight, and they only fit on the wider end of the ring, or going that direction. And the intention all along, and the intention even with the original lenses that we had from the factory, was that this flange was meant to be at the bottom of the node, and that the lens was actually supposed to feed in through this side. And you can see here that it it just doesn't even fit. I can't even get the the thread started to get it to pull itself in. So he said, this is no good. Um, 
and you can see that the the molding on it was not real fine we got kind of a, a cloudy finish on the side of the lens there um, and we said this needs to be refined we need to go deeper threads uh, we need to go a slightly smaller diameter um, and it needs to be closer into the base of the bulb here so I want to show a quick side-by-side -side of the before and the after on these lenses so the one on the right is the before lens the one on the left is the after the fixed lens with the new threads on them so these are the finals this is what we're going with um, you can see from the ring here if we start even on the narrow end of the ring it fits right in screws in very easily and then that ring fits on our Technicolor node nice and easy so that's the update on these um, we also have the C7 available uh, if you want to see kind of a side by side on those the uh, C7 and C9 so those are done um, I wanted to also give a few updates on some other things. Uh, you may see this one here. We are working on what uh, size of these is, is typically called a G40 or a G60, depending on, on how big it is. Um, you know, this is comparison to a, a C7 or C9 here. Um, so you can see much bigger. If you wanted to do a big grid with these things and you just wanted a very large pixel diameter, um, these lenses will will be just great for that. Um, this is a an early prototype lens. This is a two part lens, and these still thread um, on and off. I didn't really like that, um, and I thought some people may actually want to see the color all the way around. Um, so we are going back to the manufacturer that did these lenses for us. Um, we're having a new mold made uh, that will be a full sphere all the way around and it will have uh, this same thread pattern here that we have uh, for our C7 and C9s. So it'll work the same with the lenses. Um, it'll just thread onto a ring and then that will uh, screw onto your pixel strings. Um, the next update, the next thing I wanted to talk about is what is running these. Um, if any of you have followed the uh, Joshua line um, and what Ed with j one says has been doing. This is the new P12S controller. Um, this is just really cool. It's a little bit deeper, you'll see on the board here. The connections, everything, are identical to the P12R. Um, the main change, as, as I understand it or have been explained, is that there are now two processors on this board instead of one. Um, the limit on um, the P12R of 12 outputs and 12 universes was that was what that processor could handle effectively. Um, by splitting it and going to two separate processors now, um, that gives us the ability for multiple universes per pixel output at some point in the future. Um, and then they added another kind of really nice feature. If you flip the back over here, you'll see these two little Cat5 jacks. Those are two outputs of just regular DMX um, instead of pixel. Um, so as the setup goes right now, we have 12 universes of pixels, two universes of DMX. Um, at some point in the future with a firmware upgrade, um, there's the possibility of doing multiple universes, uh, possibly even two universes per output on the pixels. Um, for a total of 26 total universes on a single controller. Um, I've uh, gone back and forth with Ed by email. He's also uh, a little behind on this because he's working on some really exciting new stuff, um, some new much smaller, uh, much cheaper pixel controllers, um, and just some, some really neat stuff in the works. So, uh, keep checking out his site, j1sys.com, uh, or do a Google, Google search for Joshua One Systems um, if you're interested in his stuff. He does not have a storefront or anything like that. Um, 
which I actually kind of prefer. Um, you just need to email him. I've never ever had a, a problem getting a hold of him. Uh, he always gets back to me at least within a day or two. Um, and he's a busy guy. He does other other stuff outside of this, but uh, uh, always had good experience with him and, and just love his stuff. Um, next thing I want to talk about is from the controller to the pixel strings. Um, you'll know that the uh, Technicolor pixels all come with the lead wire on them. And because these are 2811 IC, these are a three pin plug. And I've had a lot of people say, well, you know, the pixel controllers all have four outputs and I use a four pin plug on mine. Uh, so if we look at our wires on our four pin, we've got a red and black for power. Um, we've got our blue and our yellow for our data and our clock. Um, and so a lot of people are already using these for their uh, connections into their pixel controllers. So they said, well, how do we go from a four pin on our pixel controller to a three pin on our pixel strings? Do we have to change out all of our pigtails? Um, so I went back to the wiring factory and I had these made. Um, this is a four pin to three pin adapter. So if you want to run your controllers with the four pin pigtails in them um, for your 2811s or 6803s or any other ICs that require that clock wire um, you can do that so you never have to change your controller and then we'll put on our 4 pin to 3 pin adapter and then we can plug in the Technicolor right to the other end of that now what this adapter does is it takes the pins for power I'm um, positive and negative power, and those are continuous all the way through from the input to the output. So we're not doing anything with power. We're also taking the pin for data, which is input on the on the four pin, and that is continuous all the way over to the three pin. Um, so our data is, is also continuous. The clock pin that's on this is not connected to anything. Um, so it just disappears because we're not using it for the Technicolor strings. So that allows you to use one set of four pin pigtails for your controller. Your controller will work with any kind of pixel strings that are out there, um, either three pin or four pin. And if you are running something with three pin, we just use one of these little adapters. And I think these are a dollar each um, ordered from China. So that's another uh, development. I am working on something uh, to house this outside, um, as well as a new type of uh, four pin. Uh, connector that will work with that new housing that is coming. Um, the factory that does the wiring and the molds for the wiring is very very slow. Um, those drawings, those molds and everything were started over two months ago. Um, I check in with uh, my broker over there about once a week to see where they're at. He's been good about keeping up on top of that factory um, and it, it's just a lot of hurry up and wait. Uh, so those will come. I haven't announced a lot about it. I haven't said a lot about it because I'm not sure that it will be ready by this Christmas. Um, if it does, it's going to be a, a nice happy accident, honestly. Um, I really kind of expect it. Probably not until uh, right at Christmas or, or possibly even after the first of the year. But we'll see. Um, it's, it's not impossible that they'd get done and get here. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, as we've shipped several thousand of these strings now um, are the differences between the 50 count and the 100 count. Um, these LEDs are a third watt each um, and that gives us an issue when we do a 100 count string of dealing with voltage drop. Um, the 50 count strings and that was what what was done with the earlier group buys and the group orders uh, we did the 50 count because it's very easy. You know, you can go 50 pixels and then you have to inject power. And you can use the T-taps or uh, just tap into these two outside wires, whatever you prefer. Um, but it keeps it nice and easy and simple for uh, beginners that don't want to do the power calculations and things like that. Um, if you want to go with a 100 count string or you need something that's longer than 50 count, um, chances are pretty good that you're not going to have enough power at the end of the string to light them all the correct colors. What happens is as you, as you run out of power and say you try to light it white, it isn't going to look white. It's going to look uh, either yellow or pink um, because you just don't have enough voltage left to, to properly uh, drive those LEDs. Um, 
we're doing a couple things to fix that. Uh, the first thing is, you know, heavier gauge wire. This is a, a 20 gauge high strand wire. That does a little better than some of the other pixel options that are out there. Um, it was important to keep these a UV rated wire, so we're kind of limited on some of that. And without going back and doing a whole redesign of the Pixel PCB, um, we can't do the really heavy, heavy gauge wire like these um, because it, it there's just not enough room on the PCB to solder it all in. Um, it would also require a mold change instead of the flat wire to go to the round wire, and it would be uh, ridiculously expensive. Uh, this string of pixels would jump from Right there, about 30 35 bucks currently to uh, easily double that with a heavier gauge wire. Um, and I don't know that it would really make that big of a difference with the voltage drop. Um, our main issue is power draw. And so, in the works currently um, is a version 2 Technicolor Pixel. And I wanted to show those. This is a, just a sample from the factory. Um, of their existing mold and uh, you can see let me plug this other one in here I think I've got a different uh, IC set up on that output tomorrow it's running uh, we'll see um, but you can see these are quite a bit brighter um, these use a 50-50 an all-weather 50-50 LED, um, which is kind of cool. And uh, you see they're quite a bit smaller. Uh, this PCB is narrower because the LED is smaller. Um, these also on the sample string, these are four wire. These are 2811, I believe, um, for these. So what we're doing is we're taking that PCB that's on the inside of there. We're going to modify it. We're actually doing a whole new uh, PCB just for this. Um, we're going to modify it. We're going to put it on a higher riser so that it matches the same height that we have currently for the Technicolor molds. Um, and then we're going to either end up modifying the molds or um, doing a uh, a plug uh, to fit the molds in. Uh, Matt Ross has actually been helping me out with that. I just uh, yesterday got the um, plugs in for those and he was kind enough, uh, he's got access to a 3D printer to uh, do up those little plugs for me. Um, so you'll see this plug has a little square in the bottom and that's made to fit uh, or, or receive the square LEDs on these PCBs. So we'll fit that square LED down in the plug, and then this will fit into the existing Technicolor mold, um, and we'll mold those up. Um, there is still a few weather-related issues. Um, I think I've got a solution for it. We're just going to have to make a few and try it. Um, you'll notice that these, if I can zoom in here, um, these have kind of a uh, silicone, soft silicone poured over them, and you can see if I... If I scratch this, it just comes off. This is the stuff that um, we haven't wanted on all of our other pixels because uh, it just doesn't last. It's crap. It's soft. It lets water in. Um, so no on the soft silicone. But the reason they've done that is even injection molded, there's a little gap, uh, especially when these things get warm, between the edge of the LED. I don't know if you can see this or not. And the plastic that it's molded on. See how it opens up there? and we don't want that gap in there. So those plugs are made where there will be a little uh, raised edge or a lip that runs around the outside of, of the mold. Uh, so hopefully what we'll be able to do is injection mold those and then we'll use the hard resin to pour around the perimeter on the outside of the LED. Um, this particular LED you see any of these 5050s that have the black edge on them that is a waterproof LED. It's already got a coating on it. It can be exposed to weather. Um, and that is another reason that these uh, tend to look so much brighter is there's there's no plastic, there's no nothing between those uh, little, little chips in there and your eye. So the V2 of Technicolor is underway. Um, I'm expecting those either very late this year or the beginning of, of next year. 
Um, but I know a lot of you have been anxious about the lenses and what's going on with that, so I'm going to give you a quick update. Um, if you got any questions about anything, you can always email me. Um, I'm getting ready to kind of overhaul our website with uh, some more documentation on these. I've put out on most of the forums the uh, pinouts and the wiring color and all that uh, as people get them and need to hook them up. Um, it's uh, it's really fairly simple. Most of the sample strings I sent out, I sent with a, a flat wire connector just like this one. Um, but if you look at the molds, if you want to know real quick here, um, these molds have a little arrow on the side. Um, that arrow is the ground side of the pixel. So if we look at the flat wire here, uh, the wire on the left side is our ground wire. The center wire is the data, and that's pretty universal across all the different pixel types. And then the side of the Technicolor without the arrow, that is our positive side over here. Um, and when we look at the three pin connectors, they follow left to right that same order. So if our little point is on the bottom, get that to focus there, little points on the bottom, the pin to the left is our ground, pin at the top is our data, and the pin to the right is our positive. Um, so pretty easy. Um, and any of these that are coming from China, that are coming from Rita, or coming from uh, Ray Wu, should follow this convention. Um, it's been a long time coming to have some kind of a standard established. I know that the DLA guys and a few others have tried to put something out there to at least get their members to all use the same format. Um, I know that this is different, um, but this is what we were able to work out with the factories. So hopefully that helps everybody understand um, how these things work and answers a few questions about them. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'm getting ready to do a lot of overhaul on our website and... Uh, We'll have a little better documentation down the road on, on some of this stuff. Um, I'm also, uh, I've also been approached by several different people. Um, they've asked, you know, when are, when are you going to start selling this stuff? When are you going to go into business? I've been real hesitant to do that. Um, I think we've got a pretty good group of, of vendors out there already, and they've all got good stuff. Um, I think as we get closer to Christmas here, I may bring in a small order of just the Technicolor stuff, uh, just the things that we've designed, um, and then some of the accessories, the little three pin, four pin stuff. Um, and that's also part of the reason I'm, I'm working on the website overall is to have a little better system uh, than the current one, which we've been doing just by email and, and PayPal. Um, so we should have some things available a little closer to Christmas. But any questions, uh, shoot me a comment or send me an email. Um, those of you guys that know me know I'll probably just give you a call.